Hello friend. Thank you for taking this quick review of incentive spirometers. While studies have shown that the utilization of IS improves lung volumes and reduces the rate of pneumonia in post-surgical patients, early ambulation is still a top priority to promote the blood flow of oxygen for quicker wound healing. Why do we recommend the use of an incentive spirometer? Answer. An incentive spirometer helps prevent lung infections by expanding and strengthening your lungs, keeping your lungs inflated and clearing mucus, including other secretions from your chest. It also benefits patients who may have low oxygen levels after surgery or a serious illness by helping you achieve a normal oxygen level. Remember to tell your patient that if they ever feel short of breath, they should report these symptoms to a nurse or MD. Prior to incentive spirometer teaching, ensure that your patient is alert and oriented, that they are comfortable and free of pain, and that this is a good time to conduct a teaching. Teaching should not be done when a patient is drowsy or unable to participate. Be sure to ask the patient if this is the first time they are using an incentive spirometer. If the patient says they are familiar with it, ask them if they have any questions they would like to review prior to using the apparatus. An example of how to address knowledge gaps is to have the patient demonstrate how to use an incentive spirometer. Tell the patient to use the IS 10 times each hour while they are awake, or if there is a goal value ordered, to try to meet the goal set by the MD. Ensure the patient has a pen and paper to record their values. Here are a few key facts to remember. The numbers on the spirometer show how deeply you breathe in. A little disc, called the piston, will move up and down. The area that says keep indicator between arrows shows a range. A ball goes up and down this range. Tell the patient, this allows the patient to control how slowly they breathe in. Now pause the video and see if you can find the parts. How to use an incentive spirometer. Have the patient sit up straight in bed or at the edge of the bed if they can. Hold the incentive spirometer in an upright position at eye level. Before you use the spirometer, Exhale out slowly and fully through your mouth. Place the mouthpiece in your mouth and create a tight seal with your lips around it. Breathe in as slowly and deeply as possible. You'll notice the piston rising toward the top of the column. The deeper you breathe in, the higher the piston will rise. Try to get the piston to rise as high as you can. As the piston rises, the coaching indicator on the right side of the spirometer should also rise. It should stay between the two arrows. If the indicator rises above the higher arrow, you're breathing in too fast. Try to breathe in slower. If the indicator stays below the lower arrow, you're breathing in too slow. Try to breathe in faster. When you get the piston to rise as high as you can, hold your breath for at least 5 seconds. You will see the piston slowly fall to the bottom of the spirometer. Once the piston reaches the bottom of the spirometer, breathe out slowly and fully through your mouth. Rest for a few seconds. Repeat this exercise at least 10 times. Try to get the piston to the same level with each breath. Record your values. Writing down the highest number the piston reach can help you change your goals and track your progress over time. Let the patient know they should try to cough deeply a few times. You can tell them, as you're coughing, hold a pillow against your incision to help with the pain. Coughing is good for the post-op patient. It will help loosen secretions and bring up any mucus in your lungs. Thank you for watching this video. Please like and subscribe for more videos like this.